This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I'm known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to look over the scriptures, to pray for one another, and definitely leave out with some encouragement. So take this time right now to go ahead and yeah, push down there and share. If you're watching me via Facebook, make sure you share with all of your followers, um, all of your friends, um, invite in individual, individual people into the broadcast or start a watch party, share into many groups. Um, if you're watching me via Periscope, you still can share by pushing down there. You can tweet it out. You can share with all your followers or put it on Facebook. If you're watching me via my website, thank you so much. Twitter, how you doing? Thank you guys so much. And of course, I'll see you on YouTube a little bit later and also on my podcast. So thank you so much, guys. And I'm going to get right into the chat box to see who is here as we uh, talk about a wonderful, wonderful topic. Good morning to you, Judy. Judy good morning to you. And that's morning there in California. That's where she is watching me from. So good to see you. Or maybe the afternoon now. <laughs> good to see you. Hello to you as well. So guys, make sure you go ahead and share this. I have not shared. So I'm going to go ahead and share into the various groups while you do that as well. And that'll give people a chance to get onto the broadcast. Uh, let me go right into my profile. That will help. We have something very important to talk about today. That's why I want you to share. So go ahead and take the time to do that right now. Okay. So let me go ahead and share my broadcast into the various groups. And I want to thank each and every one of you for um, coming in. Uh, I believe this message is going to be very, very important. So go ahead and make sure that you invite people into the broadcast. Good to see you, Tracy. Good to see you. We're sharing because we know this is going to be an amazing message, um, not because of me, but because of God. And I want you to hear um, what it is we're going to be saying on today. So I'm taking the time to share into uh, the different people who listen to me on a regular basis. Of course, somebody is messaging me <laughs> right when I'm trying to, to post. And let this get into your spirit as we talk about the battle is not yours, but it is the Lord. Good to see you, um, Cheryl. Good to see you. Is that Cheryl? Yeah, it is. Good to see you, darling. Watching us via Periscope. So go ahead and share, guys, because this is going to be uh, something I believe that's going to bless you. I believe it's going to bless you. So go ahead and share this broadcast. I got a lot of people to share with y'all. I really do. So let me go ahead and go ahead and share. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really do. And I just got a few more and then I'm ready to get started. I usually share beforehand, but I just didn't get a chance to. All righty. I think I got one more to share in. One more. 
And you guys let me know how you're doing in the chat box. Make sure you invite people into this broadcast. And we are going to get started. Well, it looks like we're going to start right now. We ready. Moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer starts right now. Guys, thank you so much for taking that time to um, share. I appreciate that. I appreciate that um, because I believe somebody's going to be blessed by this. So listen, um, we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. Um, it's, we're going to be reading something long. And the reason why I took the time to share, because I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of teaching today. I am going to pray. I am going to encourage you, but I want to read something straight from the scriptures. I'm reading from the message Bible. So the translation may be just a little different, but the meaning is just the same. So let me pull my scripture up as well. Um, Matthew, uh, 24, and I'm going to read four through 51. And what I'm reading is what Jesus said. Okay. What I'm reading is what Jesus said. Good to see you, um, Pastor Wiggins. Good to see you. Pastor Audrey, good to see you on today. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm reading again. Let me let me pull it up. I had to say hey to my girl. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I gotta give you a shout out. Um, I'm gonna be reading Matthew 24, 4 through 51. Okay, and make sure you share this broadcast, guys. Guys, Jesus said, This is Jesus, okay. Watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities, claiming I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of war, wars and rumors of wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no, this is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. They are going to throw you to the wolves and kill you. Everyone hating you because you carry my name. And y'all reading this, and then going from bad to worse, it will be dog eat dog. Everyone at each other's throat. Everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. I hope y'all reading with me. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love, but a mound of ashes. Staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry and you'll, you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. A witness stalked out in every staked out in every country, and then the end will come. Hear it again. A witness staked out in every country, and then the end will come. But be ready to run for it when you see the monster of desecration set up in the temple of the temple sanctuary. The prophet Daniel described this. If you read Daniel, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're working in the yard, don't return to the house to get anything. If you're out in the field, don't go back and get your coat. Pregnant and nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Hope and pray this won't happen during the winter or on a Sabbath. This is going to be trouble on a scale beyond what the world has ever seen or will see again. If these days of trouble were left to run their course, nobody would make it. But on account of God's chosen people, the trouble will be cut short. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here's the Messiah, or points, there he is, don't fall for it. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Somebody put everywhere in the chat box. 
their impressive credentials and dazzling performances, their impressing, impressive credentials and dazzling performances will pull the wool over the eyes of those who ought to know better. But I've given you fair warning. So if they say run to the country and see him arrive or quick, get downtown, see him come, don't give them the time of day. The arrival of the Son of Man isn't something you go to see. He comes like swift lightning to you. Whenever you see crowds gathering, think of carrion vultures circling, moving in, hovering over a rotting carcass. You can be quite sure that it's not the living Son of God, a living Son of Man, pulling in those crowds. Following those hard times, sun will fade out, moon cloud over, stars fall out of the sky, cosmic powers tremble. Then the arrival of the Son of Man, it will fill the skies. No one, somebody put no one in the chat box. No one will miss it. Unready people all over the world, outsiders to the splendor and power will raise a huge lament as they watch the Son of Man blazing out of heaven. At that same moment, he'll dispatch his angels with a trumpet blast, summons pulling in God's chosen from the four winds from pole to pole. Take a lesson from the fig tree. From the moment you notice green, you know summer's just around the corner. So if so it is with you, when you see all these things, you know he's at the door. Don't take this lightly. I'm just saying this for some future generation, but for all of you, this age continues until all things take place. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. This is Jesus speaking, guys. But the exact day and hour, no one knows that. Not even heaven's angels, not even the sun, only the father knows. The arrival of the son of man will take place in times like Noah's. Before the great flood, everyone was carrying on as usual, having a good time right up to the day of Noah, to the day of Noah boarded the ark. They knew nothing until the flood hit and swept everything away. The son of man's arrival will be like that. Two men will be working in the field. One will be taken, one left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, one will be left behind. So stay awake, alert. You have no idea what day your master will show up. But you do know this. You know that if the homeowner had known what time of night the burglar would arrive, he would have been there with his dogs to prevent the break-in. Be vigilant, just like that. You have no idea when the Son of Man is going to show up. Who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen? A person the master can depend on to feed the workers on time each day. Someone the master can drop in unannounced and always find him doing his job. A God-blessed man or woman, I tell you, it won't be long before the master will put this person in charge of the whole operation. But if that person only looks out for himself and the minute the master is away, does what he pleases, abusing the help and throwing drunk at parties for his friends, the master is going to show up when he least expects it and make hash of him. He'll end up in the dump with the hypocrites out in the cold shivering teeth shattering. Now listen, I know that was a long read. I know that was a long read, <laughs> but it is so true. Hey, Frazier, good to see you. Good to see you on today. Listen, I wanted to read that word from word. That was the message Bible that I read that from. I want to read Jesus words, word for word, different translation. You can read it in the New International King James. I read it from the message Bible. You can read it no matter what um, version you read it from, you're going to find out it's saying basically the same thing is that first of all, Jesus is coming back. And I know that it looks like this is the end of days. 
but it's not quite the end of days yet. It's telling you that things are going to get far worse before they get far better because there's evil in the world. You know, I know people are trying to figure out because right now, if you're watching this in future times, we're going through a riot um, because of um, occurrences that happened uh, with our dear brother Floyd, um, who was um, killed, basically murdered when a police officer put his knee onto his neck and kept it there for over nine minutes, I believe, in some odd seconds. Um, until he died. I know that they're going to try to gather evidence and say he was sick already and he was this and that. But no matter if you're sick and you got a sign across your head saying I'm sick, it doesn't matter because wrong is still wrong, whether somebody's sick or not sick. And so we give our, send our condolences to the family. And of course, uh, in our country too, African-Americans are still fighting the good fight of trying to... Um, live in an equal society, but I'm here to tell you, beloves, that may not ever happen. I started to get onto this broadcast and read you all these scriptures on unity about how in his word, he says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. <laughs> it's none of that. In God, he does not have any ranks. Good to see you, Pastor Victoria. Good to, uh, good to see you. That's right. Two wrongs don't make a right. I started to read you all of that on unity, but you know, quite frankly, I can read it till I'm blue in my face. If you don't want to accept it, you'll never accept it. If you have this fake and, and crazy notion that you're better than somebody else, I will eventually uh, talk on, uh, um, we're not better than anybody else, we're just as good as. Nobody's better than anybody else. But see, it takes an evil heart and an evil mind to continue to believe that and to go forward. And you know, and you know, let me just say, let me just say, a lot of people have issues when you call a devil a devil. Some people got issues with that. But what you see on earth is just a manifestation of a spiritual warfare. We've always been in a spiritual warfare and we're going to be in spiritual warfare until Jesus comes back again. What spiritual warfare are you talking about, Miss Tony, between good and evil? I don't know. I don't believe in that sci-fi stuff. Well, you don't have to believe in the sci-fi stuff. You just got to live life and open your eyes. You got to just stop chasing cars and chasing houses and chasing women and chasing men long enough and open your eyes. And you will see that we are in a spiritual warfare. I got to put some stuff up here because y'all saying some good stuff. Whew, the truth shall set you free. That's right. We've always been in a spiritual warfare. And listen, many people want to know, is this the end of the world? No, it's not the end of the world. But th things, things will be happening. You will get signs of what it is. We're getting close. I believe we're in the birth pains of it. As the scripture talks about that, you know, it's like the like the, the contractions that a pregnant woman has. You have those contractions and those feelings that the baby is coming and you have those pains all the way until the baby is born. Yes, it is heartbreaking to see it. And it's only heartbreaking to the people, Frazier, who love God. So, uh, to the people who may are, are about to come to him, who knows that there should be something better. But here's good news. Somebody put good news in the chat box. The good news is the harvest is plentiful. The bad news is the laborers are few. If you can seize this time right now, the time when people think everything is ending, that the time that people think things will never get better, the time when people are the most sorrowful, this is the time that you can tell them about Jesus and that Jesus is coming back again. And we need to be listen. Not only do we need to be watching, we need to teach other people to be watching, to count their days, not count your paycheck, not count your money. Not count your degrees, not count, I'm going to do this with my life and I'm going to do that. And all that's good. Somebody say that's good. You ought to go to school. You ought to get you another house. You ought to move on up. Good to see you, Tracy. You ought to do all of those things. But that is not the end. Somebody say that's not the end. That's not what we hear. We, weren't not, we were not designed to build our mansion here. We'll get our mansion later. Now, if you get one here, that's great. That's wonderful. Good for you. Hallelujah. But that's not what we're here for. Because if you were to do all of those things and you don't tell somebody about Jesus, if you were to do all of those things and you were not to share the gospel with them, you're not doing your part. 
And I know that we, I know many of us are sorrowful. Let me tell you something. When I finally did watch the video, because I didn't want to watch it at first because I knew it was horrible. You know, some people act like, some people act like, um, oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, what is everybody doing? Oh, what's it? Oh my goodness. Well, you've been asleep. Wake up, Rip. Rip Van Winkle. Wake up. Somebody smack yourself. Smack your neighbor and say, wake up. Where you been? That you're so shocked that you don't know what's going on. You don't know why people are mad. Now, don't get me wrong. I do not condone um, um, ripping up. Hey, good to see you, Aisha. That's my niece there. Good to see you. I do not condone people right, um, um, looting and taking merchandise and, and, and burning people's stores and buildings. I do not advocate that. I do not support that. But I can understand rioting. I don't do it myself. Because we listen, we don't live this world as if we don't have hope. But I show what's angry. And God says you can be angry, but sin not. Huh? So I can get angry all I want. But I just don't need to turn around and do something against you to hurt you, <clears throat> to harm you on purpose. Y'all not working with me. Somebody share this because maybe this is not for you. Share this broadcast right here. <coughs> And the thing is, is that we want to we want to know about God when we see him crack the sky. When we see him crack the sky, oh, oh I'm going to get right. I'm going to love my brother. No, 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 no. That's going to be too late. Somebody put in the chat box, that is going to be too late. You ought to love your brother now. And let me tell you something, an evidence, evidence that you have Christ in your life is the love you show. I put a post up there that is read straight from the scripture. So you don't have to like it. You don't have to share it because it is God's word. And it says that you, listen, if you don't love your brother who you see every day, how in the world are you going to love God? That's the Tony translation, but it's the same meaning. How are you going to love God that you don't see? Oh, God, we love you. We're in church raising hands at home, raising hands. Some of us, we can't even stay home from the pandemic, honey. We got to knock the church walls down and get to the church because unless we in the church, we ain't saved. And we just lifting up holy hands and all of that as soon as we get out. Sometimes even while we in the sanctuary, we can't love one another. What does it all mean if you're not going to show it? Oh, my gosh. But I'm here to tell you, beloveds. I'm here to tell you because some people are like, why is this going on? Listen, the Bible already told us this stuff is going to happen. Is anybody shocked? If you're shocked, you're not reading the word. If you're shocked, you don't know him because he's already prepared us for this. He's already told us it's going to be a hot mess on ice. And this is an ill, this racism, sexism, ageism, all its labels. I'm going to talk about labels one day. This is, but especially racism is an ill that we've had in America for over 400 years. Last year uh, was the, uh, the recognition and the commemoration of 400 years of African-Americans. I did a whole broadcast. I did about Ooh, on Periscope, I don't know, I did about 20, well, 30 days. I did 30 days worth of broadcast off of that, recognizing African-Americans and all of that kind of stuff. And listen, we even had Ghana have the year of return. It's that Ghana's an a, a African country in, on the continent of Africa and had the year of return for African-Americans and whatnot. And after all we've done and all the work and all the progress that we've made, we're still, somebody say still, we're still deal, dealing with this original sin. And that is hatred. This stupidity, this belief that somehow I'm better than you because our color is different. Never mind that you lay out and get a tan to be the same color that I am. Never mind that I bleed the same way. Never mind you may uh, uh, copy uh, and uh, copy my behaviors or, or or copy what how I talk. Look, I'm not trying to diss anybody because everybody is important. But y'all know I'm gonna tell it like it is. And I don't care who's on this broadcast. Everybody who's on my page know I will tell it like it is. I don't care if you white, Asian, Indian. I don't care who you are. Latin. I'm gonna tell it like it is. If it's, if somebody's wrong against you, I'm gonna say it. Oh, my gosh. And so many of us are like, this is the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. 
We got some more to go. So strap yourself in, honey, and get ready. And those of you who know God, open your mouth. Somebody put open your mouth in that chat box. And if it doesn't, if, if it doesn't apply to you, you need to share this. Open your mouth. Oh my God. Help me, Holy Ghost, say this next one. Basically, in essence, what the word of God say, hey, Effie, good to see you. Good to see you. That's my sister right there. Let me tell you, best, basically, in essence, what the word of God says, and y'all know I bring it in layman's terms because I have all kind of people come on this broadcast. Some of y'all is five baptized and all of that, but I have a whole bunch of people don't even know him that come flying through these broadcasts. And let me just tell you basically what Jesus said. He said, if you ignore me down here, you're not going to reign with me later. In other words, you can't roll with me if you act like you don't know me. Huh? I'm talking to the Christians. I'm talking to the Christians. And you know, and you know, and I'm, 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 right, I'm right here with you guys on this. When you have Caucasian friends and they see all this stuff going on and they down with you, they're not my friends. Okay. They, they ain't my friends if they can't open their mouth. Oh, you ain't my friend. You ain't hanging with me if you can't open your mouth, baby. If you can't open your mouth, we out. We done fell out. I love you. I Look, I, I see you. Don't want to be you. I pray for you. I'll send you some food if you need it. But you is not my friend. But the same token is if you say you a Christian. Oh, my God. Whew, if you say you a Christian and you not opening your mouth in this day. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to tell you to read the scriptures and say what it says. You are, look, you can say all day long what you are, but if you're not feeling compelled right now to open your mouth for Christ, yeah, I want you to open your mouth for African-Americans. I want you to open your mouth for us, okay, us and I really do. But I need for all the Christians to open up their mouth for Christ. Oh, my gosh. I know, I know some of our black pastors is like, where the white pastors at? Why y'all ain't standing up and all that? Good. Y'all say that. I get that. But I can't be responsible for nobody else. Oh, Lordy. I can only be responsible for me because when he cracks the sky, when this all really ends, we got to stand before him. And see, some of y'all, that's why I need for you to share because I know I'm not talking to nobody on here. Some good to see you, Pastor Vivica. That's my girl right there. Woo! You just posted on one of your look. You can't roll with me. What's that? Rihanna said, "Pull up." You can't roll with me. If listen, my that's my girl Vivica right there. Let somebody say something about her in my presence. Okay, I'm gonna do it in the holiest of ways, but I'm gonna let you know that's my sister. I'm gonna be talking about her. And we are now in a fruitful place. Somebody say fruitful. We are in a ripe place that we don't have to worry about the end. Because as I read in the scriptures, he wants to find you doing what he asked you to do. And the, listen, the harvest is plentiful. There are so many people hurting right now. There are so many people in, in hate and stewing in, in, in um, uh, uh, their uncontrolled, uh, uh, their hurt, their, their unbelief. They're, they're flooded with that. And this is our opportunity. And I want every young person to hear me. I want every person that, listen, you've been, you trying it this way. Because I heard some people dissing Dr. King and dissing John Lewis and dissing this. And this is the time we do. Listen, I, if I'm not dissing you, don't diss me. Anybody with wisdom knows that every person who has come that God has sent, they came in the right time, the right place with the right message. And when it's time to change the way that message goes forth, God will send somebody else. That's why you don't hear me saying too much about rioting and all of that kind of stuff. No, looting is wrong. Stealing is wrong. But you being upset and you out there protesting, you walk, you don't hear me saying nothing about it. Because in different times, you're going to have to use different methods. When I come to your door, I may dock lightly. And I know you in there. And what's up, uh, Vivica, why you answer the door? I'll knock lightly. But after a while, the knock is going to get heavier. Oh, my gosh. And don't let me need something because I may just knock the door down. 
Oh God, y'all ain't helping me today. Y'all not helping me today. That's why I need for y'all. I need for y'all to uh, share this broadcast. We are to focus on Christ and focus on him and find out what he's saying to us. Do you remember when I first started this year, I did a broadcast that's called uh, God's 2020 vision plan for your life. I said, I said in that broadcast, actually prophesied in that broadcast, I said, God is going to show you. He's going to show you clearly what it is he has for you to do. He shut us down in COVID-19. And I said, we need to focus. We need to get before the Lord and see what he's saying because he's speaking. He's saying something. You know, some of us, we had to order everything on Amazon and, and hook ourselves up and go to every fast food restaurant we could and get some food there. And oh, I got to stock up with some toilet paper and I got to do this. And let me let me zoom this person and zoom that. And we got so busy, some of us, that we could not go before the Lord and say, what is it you're trying to tell me to do? What is it? Oh my gosh. Hashtag pull up. <laughs> I love that. Woo. And now we're in the middle of a race ride and I knew this would come. The Lord showed me that. I knew it was going to come. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. If you beat somebody over the head over and over and over again and they forgive you and they say, oh, okay. And, and they do this and that first they scared, first they forgive you further. And after a while you go to swing, honey, and you find out you got a cold cop cold cop against your chin. Oh gosh. See, we don't like the truth. We don't like the truth. We like to be so smart. Oh, we so educated. We so educated. We got degrees going down our sleeve and sliding down the driveway. We so smart. I read some of these posts and I just want to say, shut up. Oh my gosh. Just shut up. You're not that smart. Somebody share this. It's not for you. I can tell. Share, share, share. Shut up. You're not that smart. Shut up. You don't know what's next. Shut up. You don't know what God is doing. You don't know what's right. We ought to take it matters in our own hands and do what? Oh, my gosh. I put a post up that says, be still. God is speaking. And some people have enough nerve and say, where is God? I'm just talking to y'all. I'm just talking to y'all. Where is God? God's talking the whole time. We've been praying about this. He's exposing. He's moving covers. He's unveiling. He's showing you. See, some of some of us saw it years ago. Oh, you we can see we can see a devil. Child, I can I can just see a devil. I don't care how much you oh, okay, that's a devil right there. Oh God, here come another devil. He coming in, he's sitting in row, he's sitting in the front pew. There's a devil right there. So, I don't say that. Yeah, okay. We in the spiritual warfare, baby. You can play games if you want to. I don't play with devils. But see, some of us can't spot devils. So the Lord has to start pulling covers off. Okay. You smiling and the devil say, <laughs> and the Lord has to pull off the covers and say, that's a devil. We're not here. Listen, we're here to love, but we're not supposed to get all so palsy wowsy that we don't know what we're here for. Thank you so much, Effia, for sharing. Oh, my gosh. We are not supposed to get so engulfed in degrees and education and, and, and houses and cars that we don't know what we're here for. We are here to preach and teach the good news of God. And in any way that you do it in, there's no right way. The only right way is the way God tells you to do it. That's the only right way, the way God tells you to do it. Whew, message is the same. That's what Ephesus says, but the, but the method changes. Oh my gosh. I just read, I just read um the scripture for those who didn't didn't hear it, Matthew 24, 24, 4 through 51. Yes, I did read all of that. And today's title is The End is Near. It's near, but it's not here. Somebody say it's near, but it's not here. We got a whole lot more fighting to do. We got a whole lot more teaching to do. We got a whole lot more praying to do. We got a whole lot more heads to lay hands on, guys. We, this is not a game. We got to get people, we got to pray over people and tell them about the word of God. Because listen, 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 God is not coming back. The end will not be here. It's near, but it's not here. It will not be here. 
until that word goes all around the world. He will have at least one person, person staked out. That's what his word said. At least one staked out in every country. <laughs> and you know what that's telling you, Frazier? Oh my gosh. You know what that's saying? It's saying, listen, I don't need a whole lot of you. I don't need a whole lot of you. And let me just say, let me read this scripture before I say this. Revelation 3.20, um, this is what Frazier says. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. <sighs> this is what I'm going to tell you. Thank you, Effia, for sharing. I mean, this is what I want to tell you. Time's out for being scared. That's scared, y'all. That's the country version of scared. Time out. Time out for being scared. I need for y'all to share this. I need y'all to share this with everybody you know who've been acting scared, like they don't want to share God's word. Oh, but I and it's and it's not even that they are. Well, I just you know I don't know if I can do. I don't know and, and I and you got this voice is saying I'm not sure. Okay, time's out because the end is not here, but it's near. It's near. Thank you, darling. The end is near. And you want to be found doing what God said for you to do. And I know I've taken a long time on this right here and I'm getting ready to pray. So I want you guys to go ahead and share this prayer. But I needed to say that. I also need to say that God showed, he showed dear ones that um, in COVID-19 and, and I've been saying this something I've been saying for a long time and I know some of y'all have too. Listen, the church is important. The building is important. The coming together is important. But the church is a living organism. It is not a building. The church is a living organism. It is not a building. I learned that from my father, the late, great Reverend Dr. C. Steve C. Henderson, Jr. And my mother still teaches that this day. And when you know that concept, you know that you can't just stay indoors. And COVID-19 came through, you know, through the Lord because the Lord allows everything. And it allowed us to see, and because he was trying to tell people, y'all come on out here, y'all feed the sick, you clothe, you feed the um, hungry and, and, and help the sick and, and clothe the naked. And we so busy hollering in the church. So he made it so that we had to come on out of there. Come on out, come on out, come on out. Worship me with other people. Come on out and tell other people about God over the internet, over the airwaves. And thank you, a lot of you that's on here, a lot of you who's on here, y'all been on the front line of that, Effia, Frazier, um, um, uh, uh, Wendy uh, Key. Many of y'all, y'all been on the front lines of that long time ago. And he says, come on out. Tell people about Jesus and everywhere, on the radio, on podcasts, on television, on live stream, in person, in the crack house, uh, uh, in, 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 um, in, in places where you don't want to go. Whatever he puts on your heart, that's where you go. He's equipped you for that. Oh, my goodness. It's no time to be scared. It's time to get bold. It's time to get bold. And let me just say before we go into this prayer, the gospel is not just for you and your kin and those whose skin got the same skin as you. Huh? The gospel is not just for poor folk. It's for affluent people, too. The people who believe they got everything so they don't need God. Huh? The gospel is for everyone. I see y'all who watching me and you haven't come into the broadcast. Good to see you. Good to see you. OK, but it's all right. It's all right, because see, some people are not coming into the broadcast because they want to be undercover for stuff. Some people are not coming in because they can't. They can't click in. They're coming down some different platform. I get that. But it's time for us to come out of these shadows, honey. And it's time for us to team up and support. Last week, I talked about support others. It's time for us to support one another. And stop being jealous and hateful and envious and a stumbling block. Whew. Praise the said in Genesis 18, 20. Then the Lord said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous. And you know, that's what we're dealing with right now. I say, I'm going to end with this as I go to pray. I keep saying that, y'all. But listen, 
All of us talking about, just like they sang in the slavery song, uh, the slaves would say, everybody talking about heaven ain't going. Everybody lifting up holy hands is not going. And one of the major reasons is because you do not have God if you don't have love. If you're gonna get anything, you can get knowledge, you can get understanding, you can get all of that. You can get the word, you can get book knowledge, but in all you're getting, get an understanding. And the understanding is to know God is to know love. And you have to love your brother and sister. You, it's just, even when you get upset with them, even when they get you mad, and when they, you may not stay up under them, you may not be at their house breaking bread with them, but you learn to love and appreciate and you keep it moving. You ain't got to be best friends, but you do. You ain't got to even like them, but you got to love them. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. God, we lift you up. We magnify you. Somebody lift your hands. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. You are the maker and creator of all things, and you do all things well. And God, some of us, we even believe that you're not here, that you're not listening, but you hear every word that we say. You said this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. First of all, God, forgive us. Forgive us for the things that we've done wrong and what we said, and forgive us for the angry acts that we do, for the hatred, for the malice, oh God, forgive us. Forgive us for not realizing that you've created all of us. You created all of us equal. You've created us out of your own imagination, out of your own love, out of your own hands. And to hate your creation is to hate you. Forgive us, oh God. God, help us to be prepared for the end. For the end is not here, but it is near. Help us to do the things that you've given our hands to do, more specifically to bring more people to you, to bring them closer to you, oh God. God, we pray for every hating spirit every racist, oh God, every sexist, every ageist, every person who brings across malady and confusion and um, uh, division, oh God. We pray for their salvation. We pray that their eyes will be open, oh God. And in the interim, God, surround us and protect us as you have described in Psalm 91. Protect us and cover us with your feathers, each and every one of us. Put a wall of protection around our African-American men and women, oh God, as we try to navigate through this country for 400 years, oh God, just as like the children of Israel, as they cried out to you for 400, over 400 years, oh God, and you heard their cry and delivered them. God, we're praying for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Somebody help me pray on today. God, we pray for deliverance right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, oh God, for healing in this nation. We pray that this infection and this cancer will be dried up and die in the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off the United States of America. Take your hands off an African-American people, oh God. Take your hands off of us in the name of Jesus. God, knowing that if we don't stop this cancer, it will spread across the world. God, touch us right now, God. Help us, give us the mind of Christ. God, I ask that you empower your Christians right now. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Refresh us anew. Empower us, give us a holy boldness, oh God. In the name of Jesus, not being jealous one with the other, but helping each other to fulfill the things that you have given us to do, oh God. Open up our mouths, open up our hearts, Open up our spirits, oh God. Hallelujah. Somebody's worshiping him. I can feel it. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. Hallelujah, God. We honor you. God, we pray for all of the people who are on this broadcast. We've got the UK uh, represented, rep, represented um, the London and the United Kingdom, and we've got the um, Scotland represented here. We have the United States here, the Bahamas, oh God, we've got Turkey, God. We pray for each and every person in their country dealing with the things that they deal with. God, touch them right now, God. Hallelujah, God. Let your love spread from heart to heart and breast to breast, oh God. You can heal, you can set free, and you can deliver. You've got all power. And so you can change a racist mind. You can change a backward spirit. 
You can change a haughty spirit, a prideful spirit, oh God. We know that you can do it. And we honor you on today. Somebody's celebrating because it's already done. God, we celebrate you. We thank you for the safety of our home and our family and our children, God. We thank you for providing for us, oh God. We thank you that we're not lacking in this COVID pandemic situation, God. We thank you, oh God, that our finances are growing. Our spirits are flourishing, oh God. Our minds are at peace. We bless you on today. And we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, oh God, because you've been so good. Excuse me while I worship him for a little longer, God. We bless you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been at perfect peace because our mind has been stayed on you. And we love you, God. And we honor you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, y'all, help me now. Say amen, amen, and amen. Good to see you, Susan. Good to see you, darling. Frazier says in Revelations 1, 1 through 3, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testified to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it because the time, hallelujah, is near. I just feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah, I don't know if all because we've got so many of the people who love God on this broadcast, I just feel it just coming through. Come on y'all, come on, let's just celebrate God, hallelujah. Has he not been good to you? Has he delivered you? Has he kept you in COVID-19 as we go through this pandemic all across the world? Has he not kept you? Has he not provided for you? Come on and give God a praise. Come on and tell him, thank you. You didn't have to do it. Thank you for preparing a place for us, oh God. He said if he, has, if he comes again, that he has a place prepared for us. And we thank God so much. And let me just tell you, Tracy, we're still praying for you. We're still praying for you and your family and the death of your son. We're still praying for all of you who lost, and I lost close friends uh, in COVID-19, from, from COVID-19. We're still praying for those who have lost uh, loved ones to violence and um, illnesses and sicknesses and diseases. We're still praying for you, for those who have broken hearts. That's why the wise courtship philosophy was born. We have a lot of fun with that, but it was born because I believe the Lord has um, called me to bind up and, and to heal the brokenhearted. It's a healing ministry. And so we're still praying for you because to have a broken heart is so close to having a broken spirit. So we're still praying for you. We're still praying for you for those who are trying to get on unemployment and you can't seem to get through and you can't seem to get, get your money and, and things are dwindling down. We are still praying for you. And we're still praying for you if you feel like you're hungry or need, need assistance and nobody is there for you. We're still praying for you. And we can't, all of us can't be where you are, but we can pray that God sends someone to be there right for you, be there right there with you and to help you and to serve you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Um, that means so much to me for my sister there. Ooh, I'm just so filled with the Holy Ghost right now, guys. Ooh. God is able. And I see now, after you, I see now where early in my life, Although I was born to two loving parents who loved the Lord, who served him, filled full with the Holy Ghost and had both men in ministry and really working to help people. I see now why, even though I left my loving home and when I went outside of those doors, there was so much pain and so much hurt and so much sorrow that I went through. I see now why I went through it. Because I have a heart for people heart for the hurting. And also it gave me holy boldness 
I see now why he had me grow up in an affluent neighborhood. Didn't know it. Went to, went to his college. Affluent. Affluent people. Because you know what? It don't matter to me how much money you make or your title. Because I know you just like I am. You need a savior. Woo! I feel something right there. <laughs> I feel it. I thank God. I thank God. He is so good. And I, listen, I wanted to talk about the end is near. We talked about it. But then the Lord began to twist that message to give a charge. And I didn't know who was going to come on to the broadcast or who's going to watch on the replay. Please give me a hashtag replay, baby, if you're watching. I didn't know who was going to come on. But let me tell you something. He's giving a charge. He's renewing you. Some of y'all are doing it already. But, you know, when you do this stuff, you need encouragement. You need to know, you know, you're on the right path, but everybody, you're encouraging everybody else. And everybody's like, they drawing and they taking and they drawing and they taking. And, you know, you doing, but you need somebody to get behind you and say, keep on, you're doing the right thing. Keep on doing it. And then some are watching and you are ready to fall away. You are ready to give up. You said, listen, after I've seen what happened this weekend with the with riots and, and after I've seen what the police officers did to our brother Floyd, I, I just, I feel like giving up. I, I, I know that God is right and he's loving, but I'm, I just got too much suffering down here. I've got too much on me. I got too much against me. Not only do I have racism against me and, and sexism against me, I got sometimes my own supposedly brothers and sisters against me. I get into the church and I want to worship and somebody's giving me the side eye. Somebody's trying to hold me back from the things God has given for me to do. I'm tired of it and I want to check out of here. I just don't want to do it anymore. I just want to walk away from the faith. But don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it because you're going to be glad that you stuck with it. You're going to be glad that you trusted God. I trust God. I don't trust man. I trust what God. Had, it, listen, listen, you couldn't even trust me if I didn't have God in me. That's why you listen. That's why having uh, um, friends and business partners as Christians is so important because not just because they say they're Christians, but because they sold out. They have them in them. You're compelled to do what's right. You're not perfect. You'll make mistakes. But when you do what's wrong, you, you fall on your knees and you say, you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I can't trust man like that. I got to trust God and the God in man. And many of us are really suffering because we trusted systems. We trusted the, the judicial system. We trusted the medical system. We trusted the governmental system, We the political system. We trusted all of that, the educational system. But I don't trust any of that. I don't trust any of that. I trust God. Oh, my goodness. At the end of the day, I trust God. Oh, I got some people on here. I mean, they they my they my people right here. And the reason why I trust you, I love you. But it's the God in you that makes you more lovable. It's the God in me that makes me more lovable. And there's somebody who's watching this today. And you are so brokenhearted. You don't know what way to turn. You don't know who to trust. Every way you look, it's alternative facts. The president says one thing and the next day he tweets something else. You can't even trust your own mother. You can't trust the people who are the same as you. You can't trust people at school and you can't trust the police officers. You can't trust anybody, but I'm here to tell you, you can trust God. And if you want to have a relationship with God, if you want when the end is here and Jesus cracks that sky and you want to live with him eternally, you got to believe in him. God says, you got to believe in my son. You got to confess that out your mouth. You got to say it. And if you're listening to me right now, say it. I believe in Jesus Christ. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is God's son. Hallelujah. But listen, this is what's important. You got to believe and know and confess that you make mistakes. People call it sin, but all that, all that amounts to is that you make mistakes. You're not perfect. And because of that, you need God in your life. 
why don't you confess that today? And the last thing, all you got to say is, Jesus, come into my heart. And let me tell you something. Everybody's got issues that they dealt with. And when I went through all of the abuse outside of my home, you know, the name calling, and it's just so hard for seven years, seven hard years of verbal abuse, physical abuse outside of my home as I went to school, you know, school kids and adults not helping and all of that. When I went through that, I learned from a preacher when my father was away on vacation, a preacher came away preaching in a uh, revival. A preacher came in and said that Jesus loves you the way that you are. And that just did something for me. It changed everything for me. And even though I can't see God, when I pray to him, which means talk to him, he does things to let me know that he heard exactly what I said. When I was younger and I had all of that abuse and people turning their backs on me, I got to know who you can trust and who you couldn't trust. And I'm here to tell you that God has never, ever let me down. Ever. So if you're watching this and you are hurt by what you see and you don't know who to trust, trust God because he'll never let you down. And if you said that you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son, if you said that um, that he died for the, on the cross for your sin, and you said that you do make mistakes, you believe in Jesus Christ with your heart, you confess it with your mouth, you are what we call saved. So you have God in your heart. And having God in your heart, even though you go through all kinds of abuse or situations or what have you, it will change your life for the better. It may, you may not feel the change overnight, but I tell you, when I was angry this weekend, I could have easily been right there kicking down doors and, and burning up cars, but it was something in me. And that was God who said, teach them about love. That's what I taught you to do. Teach them about my love. Teach them that there's a better way. And this better way has changed my life because I could have been anything with all of that anger I had from what I dealt with early in my life. When I heard the sermon from the man that said, Jesus loves me the way that I am, all of the anger melted away and he replaced it with love. Now he's given me a message to love and to teach other people how to love. Hallelujah. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Hallelujah. Wendy Key, good to see you. Thank you so much, darling. Hallelujah. Thank you, Frazier. That's it, Tracy. I trust God. Psalm 27 of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh. When the enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even when then will I be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, this is what I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Good to see you, Pastor Payne. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Love you too, Effia. Well, guys, I got to go. On the Sunday of Pentecost, when we recognize the Holy Spirit endowing the men and women of God and giving them power so that they can go out and spread this word, the end is near, but it's not here. And because it's not here, you have been empowered with the Holy Ghost. Even you who just received Jesus Christ, you've been empowered. And so now with that power, hallelujah of the Holy Ghost, go out and tell somebody about God. Hallelujah. Go tell them about a Savior who saves you from all of your sins. Hallelujah. I got to go. I love you guys so very much. This is Tony Henderson Mayers. 
I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayors. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still on his throne and he's still in control. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight and pray. Take care. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. 